High School Football on Bear Country 95.3. Good evening, everyone, live from Pollard Field in Buckland. Turkey Day football here on Bear Country 95.3. Four local games between tonight and tomorrow morning. Two of them on Bear Country. We begin with a great rivalry game, the Mohawk Warriors hosting the Frontier Red Hawks. Jeff Terrell here live in Buckland. Sean Hubert to my right. Dave Reno is our studio producer. Welcome to the broadcast. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Sean, it is a rivalry game. You know, varying records here, obviously, and uh, certainly the Mohawk Warriors will be a home underdog on their home icy field here tonight. But it is a rivalry game and an opportunity for Mohawk to finish up the season strong and to actually finish the season has been a great accomplishment based on what we saw after week one. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that on the drive up, actually. You know, a lot of times when we see what we think is going to be a lopsided game, I would say maybe 95% of the time it is. But there's that 5% of the time that every once in a while there's that team that you just don't expect to do something uh, great and, uh, you know, this Mohawk Warrior team, I know we've talked about it on and off the air, but uh, for me, my memory of this team is not going to be their record uh, in how they finish this season, but uh, the fact that they made it through this season and the determination and the grit and the heart that they showed. And uh, for those that just uh, just tuning in, uh, you know, this team started with 13 kids on their roster week one. Uh, actually finished that game at Franklin Tech with 10 kids. The last two minutes they played with 10 kids. And, uh, you, you know, we, we were just, we were hoping they would survive this season. Well, they've, they've survived, they've thrived. And uh, I was just talking to Coach McLeod. He said the future looks bright. He's got some kids coming up. And uh, so, again, whatever happens here tonight, these guys should be very proud of what they were able to do this season. Sean, only a 1-8 and eight record. Their one victory uh, was against a team that uh, has uh, winless during the 2018 season, that would be Pathfinder. And they've had some games where they really had a hand to them. They had some games, though, where they were very competitive, didn't get the finish line with the W, but they have played some pretty good football of late, and you know they're, gonna, they're going to give uh, Frontier everything they have. Well, and offensively, that really was the problem. You know, the defense outside, we've seen them play some pretty decent games, but again, you're going to get worn down after a period of time, and they don't have a lot of extra bodies, so, uh, you know, you've got a lot of kids playing both ways, but uh, you know, offensively, that's really where they've been challenged this season, and uh, they've been working on some things here, and again, they've got some talent, but uh, Frontier, again, uh, you know, when you look at the record, you look at the league that they played in, the teams that they played against, uh, some of the battles that they fought this season, uh, it certainly looks as though Frontier should be the big favorite here tonight. Frontier looking for their fourth consecutive victory in the rivalry, and they, uh, they, uh, they have a superior record, but they've been having a tough time lately, Sean, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Teams have been really scoring, not at will, but they have not had uh, too much difficulty getting into the end zone. Uh, on the other hand, the last two weeks, they've gone up against some really tough competition. The playoff game, the loss on the road against South Hadley, a dynamic offensive team. And then, of course, uh, a week and a half ago in the rain at home against Amherst, that was a very fast, very athletic Amherst team. So they had a tough time defensively there as well. So even though Mohawk has struggled offensively, maybe an opportunity against a Frontier team that's been uh, struggling a little bit on that side of the ball. Well, yeah, again, it kind of started with that loss to Turner's Falls, and they have lost four of their last five games. Um, so yeah, you could look at it that way, that it is a team on, on the decline. But, again, look at the teams that they played. You know, we were at that Amherst game. We were at that South Hadley game. That's a pretty good competition right there. And uh, although they didn't, they didn't stack up those nights, um, this is still a pretty good football team. And, again, what they do, they, they're very good at what they do, and that's run the ball. Um, we'll see, uh, you know, if they toss it a little bit here tonight. But I, I've never been to the frozen tundra, but I imagine this is what <laughs> it looks like. So, you know, I don't know how that affects your, your game plan either. Yeah, field conditions will obviously be – an impact uh, factor here tonight. That is stating the obvious. There is uh, a little bit of crusty snow and a lot of mud beneath that. So that is definitely going to play a role on both sides of the ball. Uh, we'll see actually how it plays out as the game goes along. Uh, maybe it won't be as bad as it appeared, but we're both down there, uh, Sean, and uh, yeah, the track is not good. Not great field conditions. And of course, the wind, definitely a factor. And it's going to be very cold here. Uh, tonight as well, but it, it's football weather here uh, in the uh, West County here tonight, no doubt about that. I, I, was, I was walking by Coach McLeod, I said, hey, if any one of these kids complains, <laughs> remind them of the two-a-days they were doing last summer and how much that, how terrible that was, <laughs> right? You know, complain about yeah. how hot it was. Well, guess what? Here you are. So uh, it all comes out in the wash. Well, it was great. I was watching, though, when the Frontier kids uh, came out on the field uh, for their early warm-up, the, uh, the the first warm-up that they do. They were out there, and they are having a blast. I yeah. mean, I think these kids are going to have fun tonight. You might as well. Hey, yeah. again, and this is the last game for a bunch of these kids, so so, uh, yeah, embrace it and uh, enjoy it and uh, go out there and have some fun, absolutely. Frontier Red Hawks looking for their fourth consecutive win in this rivalry. The last time Mohawk won 
well, that was four years ago up here, Shine, and we'll always remember that one. Epic. That uh, that multiple overtime game, Frontier ended up, uh, rather, Mohawk ended up winning that 48-46 to on a game that was actually played on... Believe it or not, Friday afternoon, the game was supposed to be played on Wednesday night. We had a major snowstorm that night. Greenfield Turners did play the next morning over at Vets Field, and they waited until Friday afternoon to play up here, and it was a great game, and that's the last time that the Blue and Gold won in this rivalry. Yeah, it, but it's been nice again, you know, like uh, back in the day when Turners and Greenfield, and then you had uh, Frontier and Mohawk, and you could pretty much pencil Greenfield and Frontier in for wins on those days, and uh, those days have, are, have long gone, especially uh, in the Greenfield-Turners rivalry now, but uh, even in this one, you know, again, over the last uh, 15 years or so, we've seen a lot of competitive games that Mohawk has lost, and they've won a couple of these too, so again, yeah, it's nice to see uh, at least it's been a competitive series here over the last decade or so and again this would be a long shot for the Warriors but it would make a great story if they could win this one here tonight. Mohawk Warriors hope to pull off the stunner here on their home field in Buckland. We'll take a time out here on the pregame show. We'll come back. We'll talk about the other games happening for Turkey Day. Again two games tonight, two games tomorrow morning here in Bear Country. We'll do that next. Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney in Greenfield. Call his office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ Service. Voted best mobile disc jockey in the Valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market, great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in South Deerfield. And we are back live at Pollard Field in Antarctica, or actually yeah. Buckland, Massachusetts. The frozen tundra. Yeah, it is. That's, uh, we're trying to give you a visual here. They uh, they did uh, either shovel or snow blow or something. They have every five yard you know, on the uh, yard markers. Every five yards has been snow blown, and then the sidelines. But in the interim, we've had a lot of blowing snow since then, so a lot of that got covered up. So when we place the ball, fans, when you're listening. It's it's a guesstimation at best. Close we're, enough, we're, yeah. We're just going to say the ball is around the 32-yard line or so. We'll do our best to uh, accurately uh, describe what's happening here. Uh, again, very, very windy here. We're expecting uh, plummeting temperatures and a very cold uh, morning for the two Turkey Day games happening tomorrow. But we'll take it back a step. One of the games that was supposed to be played tomorrow morning over at the Tech School in Turner's Falls, uh, Franklin Tech and their new Thanksgiving rival, Smith Vocational, uh, they're actually playing that game tonight under the lights over at Industrial Boulevard. So they'll be dealing with uh, probably similar conditions, maybe not quite as windy down in the valley as it is up here in the uh, foothills of the Berkshires, but uh, plenty cold over there. And Joe Gamash's kids, you know, kind of an up and down year, but uh, they're heavily favored at home against Smith Vocational. Yeah, they might kind of find that they like to play the night before Thanksgiving. You know, this is a really enjoyable football game. Again, mm -hmm. folks are just starting to get home for the holidays and. Uh, you know, starting to starting to settle in a little bit, and I really like this this evening before Thanksgiving game, and uh, maybe they'll find that's a nice spot for them tonight. Hopefully, they'll draw a good crowd, and uh, yeah, the, the Franklin Tech again. Uh, we've talked about them all season long. Joe Gamash, and uh, again, a program uh, certainly on the rise. You got the lights in this year; that was exciting, and uh, nothing but good things happening at Franklin Tech right now. Two games, of course, tomorrow will begin with Athol hosting Mahar Shah. We saw both teams. We saw the Senators, uh, you know, have, you know, a little bit of a tough time against some of their competition. We saw them against this Frontier team. We saw Athol uh, have a, uh, an easy victory over this Mohawk team. So those two teams will play each other tomorrow over at uh, O'Brien Field in Athol. Yeah, garrapy has been on a, on a roll here, man. That kid's, mm -hmm. been, uh, that kid's been running the heck well, out of the we, ball. W once he gets healthy, yeah. he shows what he can do. Yeah, and we knew that about him. And uh, so, uh, you know, I I'll give them him the X factor. I think Athol at home, I'd probably give the edge. But, yeah, again, that, that should be a pretty good ball game down there tomorrow. And, of course, the game around here for sure, Greenfield, Turner's Falls. The game is at Vets Field 
in Greenfield this year. Turner's Falls having defeated Greenfield over at uh, TFHS back in September easily, 35-8. They had a 14-8 halftime lead, outscored the Green Wave 21 to nothing in the second half and really shut down Greenfield's uh, uh, running attack holding R.J. Bird to a season-low yardage total. They end up winning very easily. They had a defensive, they had a pick six, as I recall, in that game. Tomorrow, I, we're guessing it'll be a closer game, but Turner's Fall is probably a favorite at, uh, on the road, Sean, would you say? I, I think they have to be the favorite on the road, but uh, R.J. Bird sits 209 yards away from 2,000 <laughs> on the season, so I'll tell you this, if he gets that, I think Greenfield wins. You know, I, I really do believe that that is the key. Again, the blocking was terrible. The second half of that football game oh, was yeah. awful for Greenfield, probably the low point of their season. Oh, it was, um, yeah. And they've played some much better ball since then, so I expect a better team to show up. I think Turner's has a little bit more firepower. We will see what happens. 10-15 pregame show, and we'll kick it off at 10.30, live from Vets Field right here on Bear Country. Frontier won the toss. They defer to the second half. They'll be kicking off to begin the game. So they're going to give that ball to the Mohawk offense to begin this football game. And we will now pause for the singing of our national anthem. For the singing of our national anthem by Mr. Rick Grant. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star Fantastic. Very nice rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. And as he was singing, I was watching the flag. Now it's down a little bit, but I mean, it was stretched right now. It hasn't blown off the flagpole yet. I was watching the referee's pants. So they were all standing in a line, and you could see the wind whipping, and their pants just going back and forth. And uh, yeah, you could see the breezes starting to kick up here a little bit. By the way, this game is being uh, telecast on Frontier Community Access TV, so you can watch the game once that gets loaded onto their website and also onto their YouTube channel. And by the way, if you're listening to this game and you uh, you know, have friends or family that used to go to either one of these two schools, someone that used to live in the West County or in the South County, uh, and they live in other parts of the country, make sure, let them know. Go to bear953.com, have them click Listen Live. They can hear the game on their uh, computers or on their uh, whatever devices or you can go to the TuneIn radio app. It's powered by Sandry Energy. So if you, you know, living in California, or really, if you, have, you know, we've mentioned Antarctica, if, they, if someone's <laughs> up in Antarctica and they have a uh, service, they can listen to the game anywhere at bear953.com. And if you are listening in other parts of the country, particularly a warm weather climate, we have wind and cold temperatures here for this one. Frontier, well, the ball has blown off twice now, so Matt Hildreth is yeah. going to have to hold the ball for uh, Bryant. To kick, he's kicking from the 40-yard line. Yeah, hopefully, that twice there. Yeah. yeah, hopefully he'll keep his footing here as he kicks away to Moak, and they top it, and it's picked up center of the field, right at the 50-yard line. The big guy down front there, number 67, Zane Kitchen, was able to pick it up, and he got uh, right to midfield. I'll tell you what, that was pretty good. They kicked it right at him, but he looked like he knew what he was doing. He took that thing, and said, "All right, boys, here we go," <laughs> and he just went right up the middle of the field and. Only got a couple more yards, just shy of the 50-yard line. Looks like it's where the Mohawk Warriors are going to start this opening drive. We'll call it the 49. Moving right to left here in the first quarter. We play 11 minute quarters here in high school football. Mohawk in their home royal blue and gold. And Frontier in the visiting white jerseys with the crimson and navy blue. Pitch on the right side. Not a lot there. Maybe a gain of a yard up to the 50-yard line. Number seven, Walker. And that was Ryan Walker who took that first carry. We'll call it, well, no, they moved the ball back. 
Uh, looks like it'll be uh, second down in about 10. Or yeah, look, give them a half uh, yard. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm going to make it a full yard. If we'll I had a half a yard, yard, they'll confuse people. So, yeah, we'll say uh, second and nine here. And, yeah, again, just that inside uh, double wing formation, inside handoff, and not a lot in the center of the line there. Under center, Sean Davenport, the sophomore quarterback, long snap count. Goes to Ryan Walker, gives now to Evan Shippey, caught in the backfield, and he has dropped down for a huge loss, and the flag comes in at the very end, perhaps a face mask maybe, or well, a horse collar? It looked as though there was a tackle that was made up around the head or neck area. Now, the guy that threw that flag was about 20 yards away downfield, but yeah, that's going to be it, the face mask on the yeah. tackle. So uh, well, It's 15 yards and an automatic first down. Yeah, big uh, big penalty right penalty. here off the bat for the, for the Red Hawks. I mean, they had Davenport wrapped up, and... Um, yep, just hand up around the head. I thought his head spun a little bit funny there. And boy, was the referee the furthest away that saw it. Michael Harrison is at fullback. We'll mention his. He used to be a lineman, number 70. Now he is the fullback, number 46. He is a sophomore. Evan Shippey is lined up on the right side. And uh, Jordan Grenier has uh, been dinged up, and he is, let's see, he's not out there right was now. Was not yeah. in the start, yeah. Handoff center of the line. That'll move the pile forward to about the 30-yard line. That was Sean Davenport, the quarterback. And it'll be second down here. It says third on the far side. but I'm going to give him about three on that carry. But, yeah, Grenier has uh, been beat up this season. He's really struggled through. He was a game-time decision. We haven't seen him on the field yet, but he is second on the team in yards, 258 yards on the season, has three touchdowns second for the Warriors touchdown. as well. And they line up again, the uh, double wing, double tight end, and Harrison is the fullback. Davenport takes the snap. Here comes the pitch. Evan Shippey over left tackle, moving the pile forward, still going. He's short of a first down, but all the yardage he gained was definitely well earned. Well, I was going to say Shippey. I don't even know if he gained it. I think it was a big old lineman that kind of pulled in behind <laughs> and started pushing that pile. And he would gained maybe a yard or two, but we'll end up giving him, we'll give him a gain of three on the carry. Ball just inside the 30-yard line. We'll call it around the 28 or so, 27-yard line. They need to get to around the 23 for the first. So yeah. we'll call it third down at about third, down. third and about four and a half or five yards here. Opening drive of the game. We are scoreless. Mohawk with the benefit of that 15-yard face mask penalty trying to keep this going. Davenport, short drop, throws over the middle, incomplete. Had a couple of guys, Lococo and Walker down there and a lot of frontier defense waiting for it as well. Well, gonna be four down territory, so they figured rather than run it to the center of the line on third down, try that little pop pass over the middle and kind of dangerous. There were a lot of bodies down through there and Davenport just took a couple steps real quick, timing pattern, nobody open. Fourth down and about five for the Warriors. Again, the ball right around the 27 yard line. They need to get to uh, approximately the 22 to keep this drive going. Clock in motion, 8.24. Uh, check that. After the incomplete pass, it stopped. 8.24 to go. Now they go uh, to two receivers to the far side right. And coming in motion now is Walker. Davenport rolling to the right, bearing down the defense. And he is going to get sacked. Ball popped loose, but he was down. Sacked by Garrett DeForest, and they turn it over on downs. Yeah, it looked as though he had escaped DeForest as he started to run out to the right. But, yeah, DeForest with the closing speed came up the backside and was able to take him down. So a loss of a couple on that, and it'll be uh, turned over on downs. It'll be Red Hawk ball. Ball right around the 30-yard line of the Red Hawks. They'll be moving left to right here in the uh, first quarter here. So now here's their opening drive. So one first down for Mullock on that drive, and it was by penalty. And then they turn it over on downs. First and 10 for the Hawks in a scoreless tie. And the first carry goes on the left side to Garrett DeForest. First down and more into Mohawk territory. To the 30, to the 20, 10, 5, touchdown. 70-yard touchdown run by Garrett DeForest. 6 nothing Red Hawks. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, DeForest is so quick through the center of the line, but there were a couple of missed tackles there as well, and then at the end, DeForest just pulled away from everybody. So what should have been a gain of maybe a 10 yards, DeForest maybe to 15 at the max. Again, a couple of missed tackles, and DeForest was off to the races. So first carry of the game for that kid, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. So Mohawk gets a first down. They gain 19 yards on the drive, turn it over on downs, and Frontier first play of their first drive. 
Garrett DeForest, 70 yards into the end zone. Well, I have news for you, Mohawk, and uh, also the rest of the Intercounty League. One more year of number 10. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's just a junior. Handoff goes on the right side, stretching towards the goal line into the end zone. That is Jason Samask, another young running back. The two-point conversion is good. Timeout on the field, 8-0-1 to play here in the opening quarter. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, it is Frontier 8, Mohawk nothing. And yeah. here comes the kick by Brian. He is topped through the legs of Harrison, and Michael Harrison did a good job. He just jumped on it, did not try to pick it up and return it, and he's down at the 31-yard line. That is where Mohawk will begin drive number two. They're now trailing eight to nothing. They did get one first down on their opening drive. That was uh, via penalty, and they were mostly trying to run the ball before uh, Davenport tried that one pass over the middle. Uh, again, the, for Mohawk to win this football game, they're going to have to remain mistake-free Going to have to play some good football, but score some points more importantly. And, you know, they had a pretty short field, not able to capitalize. So now they're starting deeper in their own end. And, I mean, really the best thing for them right now would be going a, a decent drive here, chew up some clock, keep the ball away from Frontier, and then hopefully come away with some points. Dylan Wood, uh, Woolridge just checked into the game, replacing Harrison. Out of the shotgun formation. The handoff goes on the left side, up the middle, not a lot there. Kirkendall and others were able to really clog that up. We'll see who the ball carrier was getting up out of the bottom of the pile. That was Cam LaCocco, number 14. Ball by number Ford 14. momentum will give him a short gain. It'll be second down. Yeah, let's see. We're going to give him a gain of about three yards on Cam's first carry. So we've seen Chippy Walker, and now we've seen Cam LaCocco with a carry. Ball just inside the 35-yard line of Mohawk. 8-0 Red Hawks, 7.25 to play here in the opening quarter in Buckland. Davenport has thrown eight touchdown passes this season. Cam LaCocco has caught half of those. He's got four of them. They've been a good combination. And a team that struggled offensively, that combination has worked a few times. Two receivers to the near side left, one up top on the right. Ryan Walker now comes in motion. They fake it to him. Davenport will keep it himself. He's in a mess of trouble. Bryant wraps him up and brings him down for a loss way back around the 25-yard line. Yeah, going to lose about seven yards on that sack. And again, I'm not sure if that was, a, it might have been a busted play. I, I looked as though yeah, he went to hand it so. to his left, and the, 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 the uh, back was on his right-hand side, so he just turned to run. But by then, that play had been blown up, so a big loss there. Jacob Bryan at 6'2", 226 pounds, and very nimble as well. Just kind of grabbed him by the arm and would not let him get away. So third down and about 12 now for the Warriors. Ball back uh, right around just inside their own 30-yard line. They'll go shotgun again. Davenport has a back right to his left. That looks like it's Evan Shippey. Drops back to pass, looking over the middle. Now flushed out of the pocket. Takes off on the right side. Zings it out there. Wide open on the right side. Caught for a first down along the right sideline. Down to the frontier 40-yard line. Matthew Paulin, the sophomore, on the reception. First and 10 Warriors. That's what you needed right there. And that was just well done by Sean Davenport to avoid the... The pressure coming in, rolling to his right, found his receiver standing along the sidelines around the 45-yard line, and he was able to turn and scoot down inside. We'll call it right about the 40-yard line of the Red Hawks. So big play there, Davenport, one of two now passing, a big 30-yard gain there. Well, I'll tell you what, Sean, I know you want to establish the run. Every team wants to do that, but not a lot of success running so far from Mohawk, and Frontier has had trouble uh, defending the pass last year and this year, so I think... Uh, I think Doug McLeod has seen something that he thinks could work. Oh, we know Davenport can throw the ball. We've seen this kid's got a pretty good arm. From the Frontier 40, first and 10. Walker comes in motion left to right. Low snap, picks it up, gets it right back to Walker, but he's going to get dropped for a loss. The timing was completely thrown Davenport off there. Walker yeah, Walker didn't have a chance, really, once he got the ball. As you said, low snap. Davenport had to go down and get it. By the time he got back up there and was able to hand it to Walker, there was just no hole for him to run through. Yeah, they're going to mark him back a little bit. We'll call it second and 11 here. 41-yard line, Mohawk moving right to left. They trail 8-0 on a 70-yard touchdown run by Garrett DeForest and the conversion run by Samaski. Five minutes left to play here in the first quarter. DeForest had come into this game with over 1,000 yards on the season, 1,176, 20 touchdowns for that kid this season. Threw a touchdown pass, caught seven balls for a couple touchdowns as well, so he's done it all. Davenport out of the shotgun, Shippy to his left. He's back to pass, Shippy back to block. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Here comes Bryant again, and he's going to get sacked back inside his own 45-yard line. The Red Hawks brought the heat. 
Going to lose 17 yards on that. And almost a face mask there. I saw the hand got up around the face, but able to release it before it got caught. And another big loss on a big sack there by this Frontier defense. Mohawk going backwards now, third in a country mile. Well, it's really hard to do, but sometimes when the back is back there trying to block and he's trying to block three different guys, and again, this is a hard skill for the high school players to learn, but sometimes to peel off and try to just get the little dump off pass from your quarterback. But they were unable to execute that. Three receivers trips to the near side left. The lone back is Shippy. Davenport out of the shotgun. Takes a snap again. A heavy rush. Flush down on the right side. He's got to get rid of it. Finally does dump it off. Shippy was in the neighborhood. DeForest was the one who brought him down. And it'll now be fourth down. And around 23. Yeah, with that kind of penetration from the defensive line, you're not going to be able to drop back like that because you're going to get chased around. We're going to see that all night. They're going to have to go to a more uh, a pr approach where the two or a three-step drop, you know, some quick patterns, like you said, the slant ends, things you can get out quick. You get some guys that can catch the ball. So Mohawk will have to punt on fourth and 23. Where have I heard that in Turkey Day football before? Fourth, fourth, and, 23. fourth and 23. Mm -hmm. Not sure. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. They are going to chase Matt Hildreth along the sideline which is really basically covered by snow, but it goes out of bounds inside the 20. So, yeah, you know, they flipped the field here a little bit, Sean. This is uh, not a bad situation for Mohawk based on the fact that they were going backwards. Well, unless Frontier hands it to DeForest, and now he goes 80 yards instead of <laughs> 70. I mean, again, that was just uh, bad blocking through the middle and then no tackling as well. So um, let's see if Mohawk can settle in here defensively a little bit against the Red Hawks. Ball looks to be right around the 10-yard line. Well, we mentioned fourth and 23 in Turkey Day football. For those of you that listen to high school football a lot or watch it, you know we're talking about Greenfield converting on fourth and 23 for a touchdown to get them close against Turners, and the Waves scored again to steal a victory one year ago. R.J. Bird ran it in, yeah. Hand off up the middle to the force. A little spin move takes it out across the 10 up to around the 15. We'll give him about five there, second down coming up. Yeah, just killed his per, per carry average right there. <laughs> he was averaging 70 yards a carry before that one. Two carries, 75 yards for DeForest. And we'll call it second and about five here for Frontier. Three minutes, 27 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Frontier leads by a score of eight to nothing. They go right back to DeForest. He got hit as soon as he got the handoff, though. Did keep the legs moving and gained some yardage on the right side, short of the first down, but a good surge there that time by the blue and gold. Again, you know, as you just said that, DeForest got hit. It looked as though he was going to be tackled. He ended up being able to take the tacklers forward and up for a first down, so give him a gain of five on a play that looked like he was going to be stuffed for a gain of a yard or so. First down and 10. The ball just across the 20-yard line for Frontier. Moving from our left to our right, leading 8 0 late first quarter. Backs out of the I formation. They go to Garrett DeForest, left side into the secondary to midfield. Still going, and he is all the way up to around the 46 yard line. Another great run, another first down for the Hawks. Yeah, give him a gain of 31 on that one. So now let's see, four carries, 101 yards here for Garrett DeForest. Uh, got about two minutes left here in the first quarter. 2.44 to play, timeout called by Moak. We'll step aside for a quick timeout here. Eight to nothing in favor of Frontier on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. All right, tonight's game is being brought to you by the Gilmani Youth Schools, Foster's Supermarket, LaBelle Sales and Service, and as you just heard, Scotty's on the hill. Gee, I wonder if anyone stopped in for some, uh, like some hot coffee or, or something at, at uh, Scotty's on their way to the tech game tonight. Get some hot chocolate. It's right there. on the way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hot chocolate. It's, get something warm, put it in a thermos. I mean, it's uh, coldest night of the year so far. They, these next couple of nights, it'll be a lot better over the weekend, but two very cold nights to deal with. And on first down for the 46-yard line, handoff on the right side. The four, uh, Samaski got... Stood up right at the line of scrimmage. You're going to give him a gain of about one. I think they're going to give him about a yard. It'll be second down and long. Yeah, see where they mark him here. First carry for Samaski. And yeah, he got stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. They'll move him forward for a gain. So we'll call it a gain of one. 220 to play here. First quarter. Frontier eight. Mohawk nothing. Samaski just a freshman. We'll see Alec Kirkendall as well, number 45, just a sophomore in that backfield. Slot left, I formation, and they're going to go to Garrett DeForest over left tackle. Still going. 
close to the first down. Looks like he's going to be a the little bit shy. Garrett brought it to around the 46. Of Mo oh, they, they're going to give him the spot and the first down. Give him the first down. So 110 yards on five carries here for Garrett DeForest. And about a minute and a half to play here in the first quarter. Frontier leads 8-0. Well, I'll tell you, Sean, we... Wait a minute, they've got, they're going, the uh, side, uh, the, uh, Correction, third down. Well, they're not going to get All right, so they, okay, All right. they threw us, I didn't think he had it, and then the, uh, I saw them signal first down. It will be third down and one, so. Ball is on the 46-yard line of Mohawk. They come out in the I formation, and it's like an offset eye. Kirkendall, a little bit to the right. Play action. Hildreth will keep it himself. First down and more. Cuts back to the outside. He's inside the 20. Still going. And he's going to take it all the way in. Touchdown. 46-yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Matt Hildreth. Makes it 14 to nothing. Yeah, I, that was just a fun run to watch. As you saw, Kirkendall pull left, block. Big hole for Hildreth to run through. But then he broke through two or three tackles and kind of skidded one way, skidded back the other way. Made somebody miss and then... Another couple of tackles later, he was gone. Nice run by Hildreth. First carry of the game for him, 46 yards into the end zone. So we've seen a 70-yard run and a 46-yard run. We wondered how this field would affect their running so far. We're not seeing that be a factor. Yeah, not at all. Hildreth showing uh, that he has a serious case of the quicks. DeForest will come in motion. He'll take it on a sweep to the left side. Looks to tuck it right towards the pylon, and he did. He got in. Two-point conversion is good. We'll take another break here, a minute 32 to play here in the first quarter, and on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, the Children's Scoreboard, it is now Frontier 16, Mohawk nothing. Well, we want to say hi in the air to our FCAT friends. Uh, Kevin Murphy, who's their executive director, does a great job producing the games. We have Alec here, and we have Megan here. That's their, their crew. And the kick comes up short, and it's covered up there by Dylan Woolridge, the sophomore. By and Dylan, Dylan had it around the 36, 37 yard line. That's where Mohawk will begin their next drive. First and 10, Mohawk. Yeah, not bad starting field position for the Warriors, but again, not been able to do too much here tonight. Evan Shippey with a carry for three yards. Ryan Walker, a couple of carries, no gain. And Cam Lacoco out of the backfield, a carry for three yards as well. Sean Dav Davenport's been sacked, and uh, they've lost more yards on the sacks than they've gained so far tonight. He did have the one pass completion for 30 yards, but. So far, Mohawk struggling to move the football. 37-yard line, first down and 10 for the Warriors to see if they get something going on this drive. They're going to go shotgun again. Chippy goes in motion. Handoff goes to Cam Lacoca. He'll try the left side. Great open field tackle by Matt Hildreth. He got nice and low, knocked him out for just a short gain. Yeah, again, Lacoca had, had a lane, and he was pretty quick to get to the outside, but Hildreth just took the, uh, took the angle, made a nice tackle, and... Actually going to just mark him up. We'll call it a yard, but not much on that. Matt Hildreth's out there playing at a buck 40, but he plays uh, he plays substantially bigger than that. He's a smart football player. Again, he took the right angle, and he made a good tackle. And Again, that's just a good football play. Second down in nine. And the ball is spotted around the 37-yard line, maybe just a little bit beyond that. Again, they go shotgun Davenport. He has Evan Shippey to his left, trips to the near side left. He's back to pass, looking right, throwing right, and has his man. It is caught by Pollen, slips out of a tackle, and he looks like with four momentum, he will perhaps get the first down. The ball popped loose, but they're going to say he was down. Davenport pass complete. And it will depend on the spot. It's either third and short or first and ten. They're going to move the sticks. Well, I'll tell you, you can see the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. They had the three receivers to this side, and then Pollen all by himself, one-on-one, -on -one, and... Again, just a little slant in route, came back to the ball. Nice catch, nice uh, first down there. That will end the first quarter of play here at Pollard Field in Buckland at the end of one on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. It's the Frontier Red Hawks 16, the Mohawk Warriors nothing. This is Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney in Greenfield. Call his office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ Service. Voted best mobile disc jockey in the Valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. 
Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webbs, America's yarn store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market, great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in South Deerfield. Balls at around the 46-yard line of Moak. They're now moving left to right here as the second quarter begins, and this play is going to be whistled dead. We had movement, and we had two and three guys from Frontier in the backfield. Yeah, looks as though that should and go against the Hawks, I don't, unless they were drawn across, you know, and we'll it, see. It is offside, so offside it'll be frontier. first down and five from the 49-yard line now of Frontier. So now they have the ball in Red Hawk territory. Well, two penalties in the game, both against the Red Hawks. The 15-yarder there in the first quarter. Now there's five-yard here, so that'll uh, give the, the Warriors a first and five here instead of a first and ten. Frontier won last year's game 43-12. to Overall, they hold a 46-32 advantage with six ties in the overall series. Low snap to Davenport. Sean picks it up, flushed out of the pocket left, throwing against his body. He'll turn the corner and run towards the stick. Still going, tiptoes along the sideline. It looked, Sean, it looked like Frontier had the angle on him, but he evaded it, and he is inside the 30-yard line. Yeah, tough for us to tell from this angle. Of course, the sidelines aren't very plowed either, but, yeah, it looked as though he's going to get knocked out after about a 7-8-yard gain, and he's going to end up with a gain of 20 on that. So, yeah, nice job uh, walking the tightrope down the left side, and big gain there for the Warriors. Yeah, down to the 35-yard line of Frontier. So, hey, they're getting close to the red zone here. They trail 16 to nothing, but... They get a score here, make it a one-score game again. Double, double wideouts to either side. Davenport out of the shotgun. Another low snap, picks it up, has time this time, throws a deep ball, has a man down there, Walker tipped up, no, couldn't quite bring it down. Would have been a first and goal at the five. Uh, Well-thrown ball, that would have been a tough catch, double coverage, and boy, he got his hands on it. The ball was right where it needed to be, and he almost came up with a spectacular catch, but that would have been a tough one. That yeah. would have been a phenomenal yeah, catch. He was I didn't able there. to corral it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Davenport. I mean, you know, the breeze. Maybe I think it was a little worse during the pregame. It has died down a little bit, but you know, a tough night to uh, really have an aerial attack. But he he really uh, threw a nice ball there. Yep, two of five passing Davenport so far for 40 yards. Hildreth has not attempted a pass yet for the Red Hawks. Second down and ten for Mohawk. Frontier 35-yard line. And again, I think we're going to have shotgun most of the rest of the night here. Davenport takes the snap. Looks to the left. Heavy rush. Bryant after him again. And he sacks him back at the 42-yard line. Bryant with another sack. I think that's at least two so far. I'll tell you, that's a lot of yards they've lost. That's another seven-yard loss on that. And you're right, Jeff. I think you're going to have to stay in the shotgun formation because of the penetration that Red Hawks are getting through that line. Davenport... He needs to sit back to be able to figure out what direction he needs to roll or where he's going to go with the football and not having a lot of time back there to do so. Ball's back to the 42-yard line. They need to get to the 25, so we will call it third down and 17 here for the Warriors. They need a big third down play here. They don't need to convert necessarily. They're in four down territory, so they're going to have two chances really here to go these 17 yards. Shotgun, two receivers to the near side right, two up top on the left. Davenport. Flushed out of the pocket, takes off left side, throws it out of bounds on the far left side of the field, down around the 30-yard line. It'll be fourth and 17. Well, he's being chased down again, and then this time he's rolling to his left, so right-handed quarterback, smart play there, rather than to try to force it somewhere, ended up just throwing that thing into a space there was nobody. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Sean, what's been frustrating for Mohawk is they've had some plays where they've been able to move the ball, but the sacks have put them in some really disadvantaged situations here. Yep, and the Red Hawks have helped them with a couple of penalties, so uh, they've been in pretty good field position. They, their, their opening drive was in very good field position, not able to capitalize again, down 16 nothing here in the second quarter. Fourth and 17. Now there are two men. Now they're going to get Davenport back under center. On fourth down and long. Quick little throw over the middle. Incomplete. Tried to hook up with uh, Matthew Pollan over the middle. A little slant in. 
And they can't convert on fourth down, and the Red Hawks will take over on downs. Uh, even if they had completed that pass, there were defenders right there to make the tackle. So that wasn't nearly going to be enough to get the first down, even if that had been completed. So first down and 10 going the other way. Again, the ball right around the 40, well, we'll see. 41, 42 yard line, called the 42. We have nine minutes and six seconds left to play here in the first half. The Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report coming up. Offset I formation, slot right for Mohawk. They go to Garrett DeForest on the right side. Garrett brings it out across the 45 yard line to around the 46 or so. It'll be second down coming up. Well, let's see, they've run six, seven, eight. Eight offensive plays for the Red Hawks. 120, 30, 40, 50, 60, about 170 yards in offense. So not a lot of touches, a lot of gain, and of course a couple of scores on the board, 16 nothing right now. Second down in uh, about five or six here, we'll call it six. In the offset eye, slot right, Hildreth takes the snap, back to pass, turns, Floats it a little bit too high. Ryan Walker, the defensive back, had a better chance of catching it than the intended receiver down there, who was uh, Kiernan Freeman. Be third down now. Yeah, well over throwing Freeman. Actually, there was help over the safety side as well, so you had two guys back there, and that ball was thrown well over Freeman's head. So the first pass attempted by Matt Hildreth in this game goes incomplete. Third down. Lining up in a slot left is Josh Samaski. He will come, he'll take it on the right side. He's gonna get a first down and more into Mohawk territory down to the 38 yard line. Sean, that was not a very crisp run play at all. He, kind of, he stopped in the backfield before he took the handoff. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he shot through the line and gained a 16 yards for Samaski. So again, this kid just a freshman and big run there. A couple carries, 17 yards for him. Usually when a play is not uh, run like that where the timing gets that off, it usually results in a long loss, but not that time. Yeah, or, or no gain, but yeah, Samaski was able to make a big gainer out of that one. Hildreth, inside handoff, it goes to the fullback, I believe that was Kirkendale, who was gonna get up off the bottom of the pile. And it is big number 45. He makes a nice gain inside the 35-yard line. It looked like a Kirkendall run. You can just kind of tell. <laughs> Again, kid's just a sophomore, but boy, is he he's, he's just strong and he's quick. And boy, they give him that quick hitter and he gains six yards right you now, just like that. Yeah, 5'7", 204. So you talk about a low center of gravity. That would be Ella Kirkendall. They're going to go to Samaski on the right side, and he gets ripped down after a... No, well, didn't get the first down. You know, see how close Josh got it. I called him Jason earlier, Jason Samaski. Yeah, no, it's Josh. Okay. <laughs> They're close. Well, third down and two now. The ball is going to be spotted, let's see, just outside the 30-yard line. Yeah, the Warriors could really use a stop here, a turnover even better, but. If they can get in at halftime with a one-score game, they could be very happy, but. The Frontier drives and scores. Third and short, Hildreth takes off on a bootleg left, has the first down, tiptoes along the sideline. Nice little spin move. It's really hard to tell where the, where the sideline actually is, but he did get the first down down near the 20 yard line. I was just thinking that it'd be tough Hildreth. to tell when a kid hits another kid out of bounds because yeah. it looked as though Hildreth had come to the, the line and I don't know where the spun line back is, in, but you couldn't really tell. Yeah, so then. Uh, Obviously, he had not stepped out of bounds at that point. Do you think when Davenport ran on the opposite sideline, it looked like the Frontier kids held up. Do you think they thought yep. he was out of bounds? Well, again, yeah. we can't see that side very well. Maybe they saw the snow, thought that was the line. Absolutely. Yeah. But again, he gained a lot more yards on that than it looked like he should have, and that could be a reason. We will call it the 15, a little bit outside the 15-yard line. First down and 10 for the Hawks. And the handoff. Goes up the middle to the fullback, Alec Kirkendall. Let's see where Alex is. Gain of a couple right up the gut, down near the 10 yard line. By Looks like they gave him about five there, four, we'll call it four yards. And the ball now will be spotted right around the 12 yard line. Uh, we talked about last year with Landry and Worthley, and of course, both of those kids running for over 1,000 yards. And this year, Garrett DeForest has gone over 1,000. But look at these young guys, Samaski and Kirkendall. I mean, freshman and sophomore, these two kids. and 
It'll be a lot of fun to watch here over the next couple years. Yeah, get used to hearing those names. Full house backfield now for Frontier. Handoff goes on the right side. Garrett DeForest, and he is close to the first down marker. In fact, it looks like he has it inside the 10-yard line. Looks well, he, like it'll be first down and goal. Yeah, he's really having his way right now. 127 yards on seven carries for Garrett DeForest. So Frontier, uh, Mohawk rather, unable to get that stop earlier in this drive, and now they're trying not to fall behind by three scores here. High formation, slot right, Hildreth, hands two to Forrest on the right side. Not a lot there, skitters to the outside, then cuts back to the inside, still going, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown. So I say that there was not a lot of space there, but he still gets into the end zone. Yeah, he made his own space on that one again. You could just see him just getting out there and then just making people miss, cutting back, and uh, just what a nice run there by DeForest. And, yeah, the Warriors now down by three scores. 4.53 to play here in the quarter. Hawks, as always, they will go for two. They don't place kick on their extra points ever. Hildreth brings him up, eye formation behind him, offset eye. And they are going to go to Samaski. He'll try the left side, and he just barely got in. We'll take a timeout, 4.35 to play here in the first half. And our score now on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. It is now Frontier 24 and Mohawk nothing. Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert back here in Buckland, studio producer and the nice toasty Beer Country Studios, Dave Rito, is he, that's the first thing he said to us when we set up. He's like, oh, it's toasty here. Like a sauna. Kickoff comes down to Shippy at the 20 yard line, scurries to get to his feet, and he is not going to make it anywhere. He's able to bring it, well, outside the 20 yard line, but Evan Shippy and the Mohawk offense looking at a long field here. Now offensively, you know, the strategy here, I mean, they're, they're trying a lot of different things here. They've, uh, how many attempted passes now for Davenport? Yeah, he's uh, two of seven right okay, now. Okay, so seven over the first half. He's been sacked about four or five times. Yeah, that's uh, really, uh, the, the, the yardage lost via the sack has really hindered this Mohawk offense because they have had a couple of plays that have worked. We'll see if they can get it cranked up here. Ball uh, just inside their own 30 yard line. First and 10, but they now trail 24 to nothing. Davenport with the handoff, and I believe that was number 46, uh, Michael Harrison. Let's see if that gets up out of the pile. Carry by number 46, Michael it Harrison. It was Michael Harrison. Yeah, first carry for Harrison. Big hole for him to run through. Nice job by him. We'll give him a gain of, I guess we'll call that six yards. Used to be a lineman, used to wear number 70, and then they put him in the backfield, gave him number 46. That kid's just a sophomore. Ball's at the 35-yard line, second down and about a short four or a long three. Call it four. Davenport has been out of the shotgun a lot tonight. Now he'll step in behind center. Ryan Walker comes in motion. Ball's out. They give it to Harrison, but the ball is out on the ground. Frontier says they have it, and they do. Harrison never was able to get his mitts on it. And the Hawks now take over in Mohawk territory. I'll tell you, his first carry was very crisp. Again, a nice hole opened up for him, big gain. And then on that one, just never got the handle to it. As soon as he started to make his cut, the ball came out of his hands. Didn't see who it was for Frontier that jumped on it. One of the linemen, I'm assuming, because it was right there at the yep. line of scrimmage where it popped basically out. Basically waiting for him there, yep. yeah. So they take over now at the 31-yard line. And with three minutes and 39 seconds left here in the half, Frontier can really blow it open right here at the end of the first half. Crookedale comes in motion. They fake it to him. It's Garrett DeForest. He'll take it right up the gut. Puts a move on to the secondary. Goodbye. 31-yard touchdown run. It is 30 to nothing. Yeah, there you go, DeForest. Have a night, huh? 165 yards, three touchdowns, nine carries for the junior Garrett DeForest. And, yeah, the Red Hawks have opened up here now. 30 to nothing. The extra points pending. Touchdown runs of 70, 6, and 31 yards for Garrett DeForest and Hildreth had a 46-yard TD run and near the end of the first quarter. Yeah, the Red Hawks have only attempted one pass in this first half, but haven't really needed to throw the ball. And let's see what they're going to do here. Garrett DeForest is at the line of scrimmage. He's centering the ball. 
And on that play that he just scored, he, they kind of they're going to set up for a kick here. DeForest actually is going to snap the ball. It's going to be held, placed down, and it's Hildreth kicking, and the conversion kick is good. So, yeah, we'll give them one more point. We'll take a timeout. 3:29 to play here in the first half, and on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, it is now Frontier 31 and Rohawk nothing. Well, it will be a one-play drive, you know. When a team fumbles the ball, the idea is to convert, get into the end zone on a touchdown. Frontier did it in one play. Yeah, again, this offense, we've seen it all season long, the way they, they run this offense, and DeForest has had himself such a great season, and, boy, he's putting a putting a cap on that right now. Again, nine carries, 165 yards for here, him here in the first half. And here comes the kick again, taken at the 22-yard line by Cam Lococo. Nice return to the 50 left side into Frontier territory, and Bryant able to take his legs out from under him. By number 14, and the Cam ball was Lococo. thrown by Cam Lococo. He's gonna be careful. He kind of flung the ball away at the end of that. Nice return though, but a nice tackle on the other side. Yeah, again, a nice, uh, a great starting field position here for the Warriors. You got yourself just over three minutes to go here in the first half. And again, don't look at the scoreboard at this point. Just look at where you are on the field and one step at a time, see if you can knock this one in. After the game, of course, they have the uh, awarding of the trophy that goes to the winning school and the Memorial MVP, the Player of the Game Awards, uh, named for Mike Gaffigan of Mohawk and Tim Dash of Frontier. Back to pass on first down with time. Passes on the right side, caught by Lacoco. A little spin move, but a nice open field tackle down there by Corbin Blight. Short gain will be second down. Yeah, that's the combination we talked about at the top of the show. Lococo with a gain of uh, about three yards there on that catch. So three pass completions now for Davenport. That's the first catch for Lococo. 35-yard line of Frontier. Second down and about seven. Clock in motion, 2.45 to play in the half. So the game has uh, gotten a little out of hand here at 31-0. But Mohawk, obviously, they'd like to take that zero off the scoreboard. A... Lococo set him up pretty nicely here. Let's see if they can finish the job here. Pistol formation now. And the handoff goes to Evan Shippey. Big hole up the middle. And I think the officials may have missed a face mask. Yeah. Yeah, Evan Shippey said, hey, I got brought down by the face mask, but apparently no one in a striped shirt saw it. But he got very close well, to the first. he did call it. There's no okay. flag, but he is making the call. Okay, we did not see the flag on the. Oh, there is a flag. Oh, there it is. Okay. Right at the line. Oh, yep, 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 yep. There it yep. is. Yeah, we did not see the flag, but yes, he was right. There was one thrown, and that Eagle Eye, uh, Eagle Eye, Freddie Barrasso yeah, was able to on spot top that. Of that one. So that's very helpful for the Warriors. Well, here you go, Sean. They're right now, now into the. Uh, they're in the red zone for the first time tonight. If you're Mohawk, you really want to get into the end zone. Yeah, yeah. You got to score on this one, and that, and that is the second 15-yard penalty against the Red Hawks. And again, the first one didn't hurt them. This one, we'll see if it does. 17-yard line of Frontier. First down and 10 for the Warriors, trailing 31 to nothing. Three receivers to the far side left, and the tight end, Pollen, is lined up on the right side. Shotgun formation, a low snap, picked up by Davenport. He's in big trouble. He actually got away from the forest, takes off on the left side, and really making lemonade out of lemons. He very nearly turned it over in that backfield. That was a great job by Davenport. Yeah, again, the, the snap was low. He had to go down and get that thing as it skipped at him. And all of a sudden, he was being pressured. Immediately had to roll out to his left in a big game there. Actually, give him about seven yards on that. Yeah, we'll call Mo it six yards on Mo that carry. Mohawk calls timeout with 146 to play in the half. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout. This is Bear Country, 95.3. So, Sean, as you mentioned, a uh, really great job there by Davenport taking that low snap. And the ball now down around the 10-yard line. It'll be second and four from there. And then get a first down at the Frontier 6. 146 left to play here in the half. Yeah. And an opportunity for them to uh, take that goose egg off the scoreboard. Yeah, deepest penetration of the evening so far for the Warriors. Plenty of time. They've got plenty of time out, so... That's not the issue right now. You have to get the snapping down there, Sean, because it throws the timing of the place yeah, completely off. Snaps have been very low. Shotgun formation. Davenport takes a good snap that time. Little pitch into the center of the line. It's Ryan Walker right side inside the five-yard line, and that should be good for a first down and goal, and it is. Yeah, nice run there by Walker. He'd had two carries for no gain, but that one there took the pitch all the way to the right side. 
Tried to blast one of them linebackers into the end zone. Couldn't quite get there, but it'll be a first and goal here for the Warriors. Ball looks to be around the three or four yard line. Again, it's tough to place exactly on the uh, snow covered field here. They'll go shotgun formation. Davenport gives on the right side. Lacoco, not much there. Got thrown forward for maybe a half yard or so. It'll be second down and goal. Yeah, it got caught right at the line of scrimmage. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they're going to move it up here. Let's see what they do. They didn't even move it. No. Well, yeah. that actually, it uh, looks like he got lost, a, lost a body yard on that. We'll call it the four-yard line. Maybe, yeah, it's closer to the five, yeah, actually, it, Sean. It looks yeah. like it might be right where they mowed it there or shoveled it. Yep. So the hash marks you can't see on the field. It's just the snow, and then you can see where they kind of tried to shovel across each line. I was over at Vets Field at Greenfield earlier, and they, uh, they have that field pretty much clear. Yeah. So unless... Greenfield got some snow with those snow squalls that came through. We'll have a relatively dry track tomorrow morning, but not really. All right. Second down, they go to Ryan Walker, finds a little seam, either a little somersault down to around the well, two, but did not get in. Walker. Now it is third down for Mohawk, and we're down to 47 seconds left, so two chances to go about two or three yards here. How about a dome or a retractable roof or something? <laughs> Franklin Tech, I'm looking at you. You can build stuff, right? They come quick. They go Davenport, the quarterback, moving the pile forward down to the one, to the goal line. Did not get in. It is going to be fourth down. Mohawk is going to call timeout. Some of the Warriors thought that Sean got in. He got close, Sean, but uh, we're going to keep it here. They're going to get one more chance. It's going to be fourth down, and the ball is going to be, let's see, Two-yard line? No, he got a little closer than that, didn't he? Boy, it looked like he got the initial yeah, push like there. He, he got right near the goal line. They're going to mark it. Well, it looks like he still could. Well, we're, More well, like we're the, still wiggling. There we go. All right. About a yard, yeah, we'll yard and a half. Yard maybe. and a half or yeah. so. Yeah. Maybe closer to two. Well, again, it would be nice for the Warriors to go in oh, at halftime. You're, you're this close. Yeah. I mean, fellas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Frontier gets the ball first in the second half. So, again, down 31 here in the first half. And, yeah, it would be uh, you're going on a high note. You know what the play I love? I love love, love this play down at the goal line. Davenport could do it. Hildreth has already done it tonight. The, the naked bootleg. Yep. You get everybody going in one way. If you can sell the run to one way and they just take off, usually you're going to be all by your lonesome. Yeah, probably somebody spying on Davenport, I would think, though, because they're <laughs> probably aware of that. So, yeah, no no doubt. Davenport's run the ball a few times tonight. Again, lost a lot of yards on the sacks, but he's carried the ball eight times. All right, let's see what Doug McLeod, what play... They're going to go to here, fourth and goal. We'll call it the two-yard line. They're going to get Davenport under center. Shippy is right behind him. Davenport takes the snap. Yep, naked bootleg takes off left side. Looks to turn the corner, got tripped up. Dives towards the goal line. Did he get in? That was Touchdown! Pure effort, pure effort by Davenport. He was stopped, Sean, and Sean Davenport said, I'm getting that end zone no matter what. He was tackled twice before he got there. So, yeah, great effort, great second effort, great third effort by Davenport. That looked as though he was going to get stuffed and then jumped over one tackler, ran through another one into the end zone. Nice job there for the Warriors. They're on the scoreboard here in the first half. Well, Sean, so there was the bootleg, but you're right. Frontier was actually ready for it, but Sean was determined. He said, I'm getting in. Yep. Good run. Great run. All right. So now Mohawk will kick. It's going to be Dylan Woolridge, the sophomore, kicking out of Davenport's hold. Snap back. Placement. Oh, he dropped it, and now he's going to pick it up. Takes off on the right side, throws back into the end zone. A great defensive play down there in the back end of the end zone to bat it away by DeForest. And the conversion pass is no good. We'll keep it here, but the zero is off the scoreboard. It's 31-6 now in favor of Frontier. Mohawk will now be kicking off. And, uh, well, they got that. They got aided by the penalty, but the bottom line is they did run some good plays to get into the end zone there. Yeah, and they almost made that two-point conversion by mistake. Again, the snap came and ended up being bobbled there a little bit. So Davenport came out ended up throwing it. I'll tell you what, he had a good throw and an open receiver. It was just a great play there by DeForest to knock it down. Otherwise, they'd have eight points on the board. 31-6 here as we're down to 20.6 seconds left here in the first half. The Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report is coming up. We'll recap the first half here in Buckland. We'll 
maybe I know I can't. I don't get cell service up here, Sean. Maybe we'll get a, a tech update. Hopefully, is, yeah. anybody, is anybody posting? We'll that have you've to. Seen? Yeah, let's take a look. We'll see if we can get we'll that for you. See. At they are a decided home favorite against Smith Volk. That's a new Turkey Day rivalry. Franklin Tech, of course, used to play the Pioneer Panthers, but that program has uh, been suspended at least for now. And of course, we'll talk about the two games happening tomorrow, including our game on Bear Country, Turner's Falls at Greenfield. And Mohawk, do they have the 11 on the field? Well, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, I think they have 12 now. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. Yeah, they needed that guy. All right. Well, they finished against Tech with 10. Yeah, right. So now I thought maybe they were making up for it by playing with 12. Here comes the kick down to the 35 yard line. Garrett DeForest. Uh oh, he has it. And I say, uh oh, because he's up to midfield. Still going, and he's dropped down at the 47-yard line of Mohawk with nine seconds left, 9.9 .9 seconds left. Well, we'll see if Don Gordon Frontier and Frontier runs a player if they just take a knee and take a 31-6 lead into halftime. I wouldn't expect him to throw the ball, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do hand it off. And again, with what we've seen tonight out of Garrett DeForest, uh, this mm -hmm. isn't a foregone conclusion. This will be the last play. Well, the ball's on the 46. He's already scored from here. That was one of his touchdown runs. That, oh, no, that was Hildreth who scored from 46. All right, first down. And they are going to run a play. It's Garrett DeForest into the Mohawk secondary. The ball popped loose as he fell down. Now he got a first down, and that is oh, one second left. Nope, the official took his hat off, and that is signaling the end of the first half. So another nice run there by DeForest out of the shotgun. Halftime here at Pollard Field in Buckland, the Turkey Day football game 2018 between Frontier and Mohawk. Frontier leads it here at halftime 31-6. The Greenfield Savings Bank High School football halftime report is next on Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney in Greenfield. Call his office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ Service. Voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webbs, America's yarn store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market, great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in South Deerfield. And welcome to the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report, live from Pollard Field in Buckland, the 2018 Turkey Day game between Mohawk and Frontier. The Frontier Red Hawks leading at halftime by a score of 31-6, to three touchdowns by senior Garrett DeForest, 70 yards, 6 yards, 31 yards. Matt Hildreth with a 46-yard TD run, and just before halftime, Sean Davenport snuck one in on a uh, bootleg play from uh, the two yard line for Mohawks lone score 31 to six here at halftime. I'm Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert is alongside our studio producer on Woodward Road in Greenfield is Dave Reno. Happy Thanksgiving everyone, hope you enjoy your holiday. Hope you're enjoying the game. Uh, not enjoying the game are the Mohawk fans uh, as again, they, they are seeing their team just basically outclassed by a, a superior team so far about what we expected, but you have to feel good about Mohawk getting into the end zone, converting on that drive when they got close. Well, and again, they had some plays that were very positive. They were able to move the ball there a little bit. A couple of those drives were aided by a, a penalty from the Red Hawks, but still, uh, but yeah, again, the, the Frontier Red Hawks, uh, their ability to run the ball the way they do, and DeForest is just having a fantastic night. Ten carries for him, 180 yards there in the first half, and of course, those three touchdowns as well. Tough to stop that. Uh, but, yeah, again, the Warriors go in. They get the touchdown here before the half. So 31-6 uh, is our score. Looks a little bit better than 31 enough. Got to tell you, Hubie, Garrett, he's already one of the premier backs in the Bear Country listening area. He's over 1,000 yards for the season. He's had a heck of a year. He kind of stepped right in behind what Worthley 
and Landry were able to do in, in previous years uh, down there in South Deerfield. But now he'll be back next year as a senior. And I think what we're going to be doing, I, I can almost bank on it, Sean, uh, next September when he's had his uh, first uh, couple 200-yard games, we're going to say that, yeah, remember Turkey Day, the night before Thanksgiving. Uh, the, the, this is kind of a springboard into the 2019 season. I know it's kind of weird to say because we're not going to be having football again until until August when camp opens up, but this is a perfect springboard to 2019 for Garrett DeForest. Well, he's got a couple of pretty good fullbacks with him back there as well. Again, we talked about Samaski, the freshman, and Kirkendall, the sophomore. And, uh, again, the way this line blocks, yeah, the kid can run. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised. Uh, again, he gets his 1,000 this year already. Uh, let's see, he came in with 1,176. Uh, on the season. He had 20 touchdowns coming into this one as well. Uh, caught a touchdown pass this season. He's got seven receptions, about 180 yards, a uh, pair of reception scores as well. So he's done a little bit of everything Garrett DeForest has this season and seems to have gotten stronger as the season went on. Yeah, looking forward to watching that kid next year. And it will be interesting to see how he is utilized next year. We've seen him on his last touchdown uh, run of 31 yards. He was running, uh, I guess, out of their, what you'd call, I guess, a wildcat formation. He, yeah. he wasn't the quarterback, per se, but he was just basically in a shotgun, took it, and took it right up the middle. Maybe he will be their quarterback next year. You, you never know. He's listed on the roster as a quarterback. I'm not sure. Hildreth will be graduating in the spring. They have a couple of guys who are listed as quarterbacks, Ethan Michon, uh being one of them. And uh, Garrett DeForest, as I mentioned, is listed as a quarterback here on the roster. They have a freshman quarterback. Uh, not sure if that's someone that they would use next year. So, But basically, no matter what position he plays next year, he's going to get as many touches as, as he can get. Oh, absolutely, and if they did insert him at quarterback, well, again, they don't really use the option much out of the quarterback position. We know Hildreth can run the ball as well, and uh, through the first half of the season, he, he didn't run the ball much at all, and there weren't a lot of design plays for him to, to take the ball. So, uh, you know, unless they revamp the offense, make some changes, I wouldn't see DeForest being the quarterback necessarily because he's so valuable out of the backfield. Absolutely. Three touchdowns in the first half. Hildreth the other. Davenport scores for Mohawk late. 31-6 is our score here at halftime in Buckland. We'll take a timeout on the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report. It's on Bear Country 95.3. Mohawk kicking off now, and it is covered up by one of the up men of Frontier at around his own 34-yard line. By number 53, and it'll be first down and 10. Well, let's see where he actually is. Closer to the 40-yard line. First and 10 for Frontier. They lead 31-8. to eight. Again, for just joining us, three touchdown runs by Garrett Forrest in the first half. 76 and 31 yards. Hildreth ran one in from 46. Davenport from two yards with seconds left in the first half for the lone Mohawk score. Just to finish that thought, I was talking to Doug McLeod about the future of his program for next season, and uh, very optimistic. He sees uh, he sees a good number of kids coming back and, oh, and some kids coming up. So yeah, he's he's very optimistic about next season. First down carry, Alec Kirkendall, and he has a nice opening up the middle, out across the 45-yard line, up to around the 47-yard line. That's a nice gain there of about six or seven. Second down and short coming up. A couple carries for Kirkendall in the first half. He had 11 yards, so give him 18 yards on three carries again been fun to watch this kid mature through the season and he'll be a bigger part of the team presumably next year at fullback I mean he won't get the number of touches we talked about it at halftime DeForest is going to be such a huge part of the offense and he's out there right now and out of the shotgun hands to Kirkendale no what a great fake it goes to Hildreth what a great ball fake he's got a first down left side and more Hildreth still going He's inside the 20-yard line, down to the 15. What a great ball fake no, there, Sean. No, he did hand it to Kirkendall, and then Kirkendall in turn handed back off okay, to, to Hildreth. So, so real quick on the inside give. And, yeah, just, that uh, play was executed the perfection. It, it, it absolutely me. was. Yeah, no, I saw Kirkendall <laughs> take the hand off and hand it immediately. You see, Sean, what you do is you take over the play-by-play. -play right, well, no. You say no, step aside, You're doing other stuff, man. I see you got other things to do. I just happened to catch that. No, <laughs> they, no. It was, uh, again, it uh, happened real quick. Uh, well executed play and then uh, Hildreth was off to the races again. Yeah, boy, Frontier, I'll tell you, I know they've struggled recently defensively, but they are just a handful to deal with offensively. DeForest out of the shotgun, gives to Hildreth, Matt takes it left side, bounces to the outside, uses a stiff arm, but got wrapped up by Evan Shippey, a nice open field okay, tackle there by Evan, and that will go for no gain. I'm just going to say before that carry, DeForest had 180 yards rushing in the first half. Now Matt Hildreth is also approaching 100 yards. He's got 88 yards on the ground, including that long touchdown run in the first half. Did we do 
recent in recent years. Did we do a Turner's game where they had three hundred yard rushers? Was it was, that? T- was it Turner's? Was it Turner's or, or was it Frontier? Or was it Frontier? I do. There were a couple of times. I'm and gonna I have to jog my memory. Frontier here. against Tech for sure. Oh yes, that's that. That's what I was thinking of. Out of the shotgun, they go to the force. He fakes the handoff. He'll take it up the middle and then pushed back. But he got the ball down around the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and about five from there. Yeah, who's the big fullback? They had the two running backs, Andrew and Worthley, uh, Aaron uh, Landry and then Worthley, and then uh, the, the fullback there. He also had 100 yards in that game. Can't think of the kid's name now, but yeah. Actually, it's back again. It'll be third down and about six. Was it Dobis that had the 100 yards in that game? Mm-hmm. That might have been. Uh, Bryce didn't have no. too many big guys. Bryce, Bryce seemed to start slow last season, didn't he? I don't remember. He, uh, it was, it was uh, Seth Gawanter. It was Gawanter. Handoff on the right side. Josh Samaski pushes the pile forward. Still going inside the five and into the end zone. Touchdown. Josh Samaski scores from... Right around 15 yards or so out, and six more for the Hawks. They lead 37 to six. Yeah, and this kid just a freshman, Josh Samaski, four carries, 35 yards. Now he has found the end zone as well. So the Frontier Red Hawks come out of the locker room, get the ball first in the second half, and make quick work of that drive. 37-6 now, Frontier with the extra points pending. Interesting, they kicked the extra point last time. They're going to line up to go for two this time, as they traditionally do. And back under center now is Matt Hildreth. Gives to Kirkendale, Alec right up the gut. Did he get in? Yes, two point conversion is good. Time out on the field. We're uh, just inside of seven minutes to play here in the third quarter and on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It is now Frontier 39, Mohawk six. Kick returned by number 13, Matthew Pollan. Pollen takes the kick back to the 39-yard line. First down and 10 for the Warriors, now trailing by a score of 39-6. to six. And they go to Ryan Walker on first down over right tackle. Had a little bit of a holding, got tripped up by Blight as he came through, but he does bring it across the 40-yard line to the 42, a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Yeah, 12 yards now on five carries for Ryan Walker. And boy, you just look at that Red Hawk offense and how easy they've made everything look tonight. Minimum amount of carries, maximum amount of yards. Well, we'll talk more about this in the post game. But with some of the guys returning from Mohawk next year, I, there's no way they average 11 points per ball game next year. And I think they're going to get more than one W next year as well. They could just fill in some spots. Hand off to Walker and turns hands up to Evan Shippey on the left side. Evan brings it across the 45 to the 47 yard line. He'll be about three ball yards shy of a first down. A little carry for there, t- uh, 10 yards now for Shippey. Three carries, so it'll bring up a marginal third down here. Third and about four, not an easy third down. Yeah, I'm gonna remind you, if you wanna watch this game, uh, Frontier Community Access TV is here. This will be available on their website and on their YouTube channel. FCAP Media, Media, their YouTube channel. You can watch, uh, actually not just the football games, there's a lot to view. They have a great YouTube channel. They do a great job. And you'll hear these two radio guys yakking ah. on the video. Davenport throws left side. Oh, incomplete. That's a case of the receiver looking downfield before he had it. Yeah, and he was wide open, just didn't realize it. Would have been an easy catch and run, not able to convert. So going to be fourth down now, decision time for Coach McLeod, down yeah, 39-6. Just, just go. Yeah, and I would say so. Actually stopping the clock. So I guess this is going to be a charge to timeout to uh, Mohawk here. I guess, or no, maybe not. All righty, so Davenport gets the play call from Coach Doug McLeod, fourth and three. So yeah, why not? You're down 39 sacks, try to keep the drive going, get in the end zone again. Coming in motion is Lococo. Cam has it, it's gonna be a quick kick. And this is going to roll up, too much speed on that one, and rolls out of the end zone. And they'll bring it out to the 
25 yard line. So a good opportunity to try to pin Frontier deep. As it is, the Hawks will be looking at a long drive, a long field for this next drive. 4.03 to play third quarter. They lead at 39-6. Yeah, just tried to ease that thing in there and hope it would die. But this field, as we said, we walked across it earlier. And there is a, a crispy hard shell on the top of this. A little bit of mud underneath. And that thing just hit and skipped and rolled right through the back of the end zone. So out to the 25-yard line. First and 10 for Frontier. They've had a big First offensive night. We'll uh, tally up the yards. Again, approximate yards when we, uh, when we reach that point. It's a lot, Jeff. Oh, now they bring it back. Okay, yeah, they bring it back five yards to the 20. Okay, so it'll be first down and 10 from there. One more game on the air tomorrow, and then that is it. We put Sean back in mothballs. <laughs> well, actually, we, time willing and availability willing, we might pull you out for some b-ball this uh, winter. Yeah, you know, usually you catch me for a game or two. Yeah, usually it's, do, a good, do a good job. First down it. carry. Up the middle, and that is Matt Hildreth. A gain of uh, about two or three yards, second down long. Yeah, let's call it. I'm going to mark it back a little bit. So let's call that two yards for Hildreth. But he's had a nice night running the ball. Five carries now, 90 yards for the quarterback. He's only attempted one pass in this game. That was incomplete. And Matt did find the uh, end zone. He's that tailback right now behind the forest. And Garrett. Play is blown up. Garrett will take it himself. Good job there by Moak. They really blew up that play. Garrett was able to get back maybe to the line of scrimmage. Third down and long now. Well, your speculation of whether Garrett DeForest may move to quarterback next season. Uh, we might be seeing the beginning of that right here as DeForest has moved in on her center. Well, you know, I mean, I think it's not a perfect parallel, Sean, but I'm envisioning Frontier offensively next year being like those old Greenfield teams from – Oh, wow, it's over, well over 20 years now. But Peter Bergeron was their guy yep. back in the day. Yes, they had other guys out of the backfield. They had receivers, but really he was a running quarterback. And I, you know what I'm saying? I, th I think I could see an offense that's built kind of the same way. Just build, build around Garrett. He Give him a, as many touches as possible. He was an option quarterback with not a lot of options. <laughs> yeah, that kid, you knew when he had the ball most of the time, he was going to run with it. And people still couldn't stop it. DeForest could be, yeah, exactly that same type of uh, running quarterback. Now they're gonna get Hildreth back in there under center. And a little misdirection, counter play. And on the right side, that's going to go for a first down and more to midfield, to the 20. From behind Hildreth, is he gonna take it to the house inside the 10, five touchdown. He took it all the way on the counter play, Hildreth. And six more for the Hawks. They lead it 45 to six. That's about 70 yards on that. It looked as though he got kicked out of bounds on the other side of the, yeah, of the 50, but. Impossible to tell where the sideline is. I think a lot of the players on the field aren't exactly sure where the sideline is. Garrett DeForest has 184 yards rushing. Matt Hildreth now has 160. Wow. And a pair two, of touchdowns. Two guys flirting with two bills yeah. in the same game. That is a. That is pretty darn good. That's amazing. 45-6 now. So the Hawks will get their fourth straight win in the series. And they're going to try to kick here again. Well, Hildreth really pounded that first one. And Hildreth is probably still catching his breath. He'll kick it. Did he tuck it inside that right upright? And he did. Extra Conversion points. kick is good. Makes it 46-6 Frontier on the car quest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Children Falls scoreboard. Late third quarter, this is Bear Country 95.3. And the kick from Bryant comes down to Number 46, Michael Harrison, and he wisely just jumped on it right around the 41, 42 yard line. So Mohawk will take over there. 46 to six is our score here. The Warriors just not able to run the ball here tonight against this defense. Ryan Walker leads the way, five carries, but just 12 yards on the ground for him. Shippy's got 10 yards. Harrison, six yards, and Lacoco five. So again, finding it tough to get out of the backfield. Out of the shotgun, Davenport has Shippey to his left, receivers to either side, he's back to pass, has plenty of time this time, airs it out. Cam LaCoco with a great catch 
inside the 35-yard line of Frontier first down. Well, this is something that they have done pretty well tonight. Throw the ball now 78 yards through the air for Davenport. Second catch of the game for Lococo, 28 yards for him. I tell you, Sean, two more seasons of Sean Davenport throwing that football. I mean, on a windy night, he laid it right on the money. That is a great throw. And again, Lococo's caught half the touchdown passes he's thrown this season. He's thrown eight. Lococo's caught four of those. A nice combination. Nice catch there by him as well. First down and 10. Ball right around the 35-yard line of Frontier. Again, they'll go gun here. Frontier comes blasting through. They get held up. Davenport skitters to the left, steps up, zips the ball wide open. Walker, first down inside the 20-yard line. And they got a nice drive going here. I'll tell you, for as many times as Davenport was sacked in the first half, he had plenty of time back there this time. And finally, a wide open receiver. 93 yards through the air now, five of 11. The sophomore, Sean Davenport, and the Warriors got something going here. He is making a strong bid. Again, each team will have a an MVP, a Memorial MVP award. The Mohawk one is named after Mike Gaffigan, a great, great athlete here, up here at, uh, at Mohawk Trail Regional back in the late 60s. Timothy Dash back in the 80s for Frontier. And now quarterback draw, and there he goes. He's gonna go into the end zone, touchdown! Second touchdown of the night by Sean Davenport. It is 46 to 12. I'll tell you what, Frontier brought everybody. They came on a blitz and then they kind of overran him. Davenport was able to step up in the pocket and then there he was all by himself and just took off running and pretty much untouched through the middle of the field into the end zone for Sean Davenport. So nice run there by him and the Warriors on the board again. Now it's 45-12. They will line up to go for the two-point conversion here. They will go for the two here. Davenport under center. Takes a short drop looking to the right. Throws to the right. Incomplete. Dropped on the right side. It would have been good for two. But alas, it was dropped by Pollen. Take a quick 30-second timeout. Davenport and it looks like that actually was the last Pollen. play of the third quarter. So we'll take a full minute timeout here. 46-12 is our score at the end of three. This is Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney in Greenfield. Call his office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ Service. Voted best mobile disc jockey in the Valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webs, America's yarn store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market, great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in South Deerfield. Well, Hubie, I would not be surprised if Sean Davenport's thinking to himself, you know, back in the first half when Frontier was bringing the heat, I wished I had used my legs a little more the first half. All right, onside kick here. I don't know if he meant to do that. He topped it. It is covered up by Frontier right in midfield, but if that was by design, that was a they had a reasonable chance at recovering that, but it will be Frontier ball first and 10 right at midfield. But Sean Davenport with two rushing touchdowns, that quarterback draw was beautiful, and, and he's a little bit faster than I realized. And you could see somebody shot through the linebacker came up quick and it was all kind of clogged up there for a second. But yeah, he was able to step up. Everything kind of came around him and the middle of the field was wide open. A nice run there by him. First down and 10 for Frontier right at midfield. Moving left to right. We're now in the fourth quarter. And hand off on the right side, Samaski, And he's got close to first down yardage down at the 40 yard line. 46-12 as we go here. So again, Frontier cruising to victory number four consecutively. And they'll, they'll finish the 2018 season on an up note. They have, uh, well, again, on the post game, we'll talk about some of the returning guys, the guys who will be back next year. They'll be second down and short here. So and six and five, not a great record for them. Probably a little disappointing. Well, we've, we've talked about this on the radio. We talked about it uh, yesterday over at uh, GCTV Studios, the uh, Turkey 
the turkey talk show we did with Bobby C. I'll talk about this in a moment. Up the middle, Kirkendall has got the first down inside the 35-yard line, and they never actually did bring him down. They whistled the play dead. Well, we talked about this again, Sean, just uh, yesterday on, on TV. Frontier, Frontier, in the years that we've been doing the games, well, a couple years, a, a, a while back they went 2-8, and eight, but really their down years are seasons like this, 500-ish. Yeah, five, five, five mm -hmm. that, that's a down year yep. for, the, for this program. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt. You know? Disappointing for them, and they still made the playoffs. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, they don't, there's, there's not usually this big precipitous drop. Um, with other programs, usually there is, and then they come back up again. Center of the line, moving it forward. Close to another first down, down around the 30-yard line. We'll see. It's got to be Kirkendall. Kirkendall. Yeah, that was Alec. Yeah, 45. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can just tell. Yeah. <laughs> you can just tell when there's a pile of people and it's still moving. Yep. Usually Kirkendall's in the middle of that. Well, again, we're talking about a guy who goes 5'7 uh, and 204 pounds. Strong. I mean, look at him. And, and he wears number 45. I mean, that, yeah. If that's not a fullback that's, number. He just looks yeah. like a fullback. He just, yeah, a fullback physique, fullback number. And you're going to go right back to Alec. Right up the gut. Pushed back. They never brought him down. <laughs> they still hadn't been He's, tackled yet. <laughs> yeah, they just whistled the play dead. They move him forward. Did he get the first It'll with be the close. momentum? That's He's close. Might have been a little bit shy, but let's see where they give him a mark here. Ball is 24-yard uh, line. No, didn't quite get it. Yeah, just give him a yard on that. So, All right, Come on, Matt Hildreth. Just give it to 45 again. Yeah, that would seem to be the easy thing here. <laughs> Six carries, 32 yards for Kirkendall. I'm thinking pretty soon we're going to see some clean jerseys out there for Frontier. They go, yeah, they go back yeah. to Alec again up the middle, and he has the first down easily. In fact, little... Late burst, brings it down around the 20-yard line. First down and 10 for the Hawks. Yep, big lead here, 45-12. Of course, those seniors don't want to come off the field, that's for sure, even with the big lead. No, they're loving this. Yeah. They're winning big. They're playing in the snow, which we all did as kids, you know. I remember, uh, you know, Sean, you and I go back to the days when the Vikings played outdoors and we'd go outside and play in the snowstorm and pretend it was, you know, Packers against the Vikings or the Bills, whatever it was. Be out there till your nose was purple. Didn't care. <laughs> you didn't care at all. First down and 10, right near the 20 yard line. They go to DeForest. He'll take it over the left side to the right side now and he's gonna take it into the end zone. Touchdown number four of the night for Garrett DeForest. Six Garrett more for the Hawks. 52-12. Yeah, and 207 yards as well now for the junior. Garrett DeForest, 12 carries, 207, and four touchdowns. Well, if they keep playing and they keep him on the field, maybe he go, he gets to 2K. No, he <laughs> Yeah, I guess so he's about 1,200 coming in, so yeah. yeah, yeah, they'd have to play a couple overtimes or something for that to happen, but uh, again, another great season for, uh, another oh, great yeah. season for a running back for, and, uh, for Frontier. And, and one more year of him. Yeah, be a lot I of mentioned. fun. Freeman will hold for Hildreth, as uh, so he'll try to convert the kick, placement down, the kick is on the way, the kick is right near the left upright, it is good. 6.55 to play here in the third quarter, and the score now is Frontier 53 and Mohawk 12. Back after this on Bear Country 95.3. All right, we're halfway through the fourth quarter here now, 53-12 in favor of Frontier. And Frontier looks like they have mostly their starters out there defensively. And when they get the ball back, I'm uh, definitely anticipating the second string offense will be out there. Yeah, I would think so. We might have seen the last of uh, Garrett DeForest for tonight. If we did, again, 12 carries, two over, over 200 yards, and four touchdowns for him. Gee, I wonder if he'll be the MVP for right. Frontier. I wonder if he's going to get the Dash Award. Pass on the right side. Looking to get it over there on the right Dad side to pass. Dylan Woolridge. It goes off his hands. It'll be Woolridge. second down and long for the Warriors. I tell you, Matt Hildreth's run for 160 yards himself. So, boy, you look at those kind of numbers. And 
Well, we don't get a vote, but I would vote number 10. I would myself. say right now for sure, yeah. And on the other side, I'd go number 8. Yep. For the Mike Gaffigan Award. Yeah, and again, we mentioned those are memorial awards. Uh, neither of those men uh, with us anymore, but they are remembered forever on this night. Out of the shotgun. Heavy rush. Dumps it out. They set up a screen. Nice catch in the backfield, but his oh. knee went down, and it did make contact. It was caught by Evan Shippey. It's going to actually go for a loss of a yard or two. But a good job by... Shippy to get open and a good job by just hanging in there and executing the pass by the quarterback. It was a great play call. I mean, Frontier is so aggressive. And when you see four linemen and then nobody's around them, <laughs> you either got to go, uh-oh, and you turn around. And, boy, that thing was set up. But as soon as the ball was caught, there was a slip and right down to a knee. Otherwise, that would have gone at least for a decent game. Roughing, the, roughing oh. the passer penalty, though, against the Hawks. They have not helped themselves. I tell you what, if this was a closer game, and Don Gordon would have a serious issue with, uh, that, is that three 15-yard penalties here Yeah, three yeah. four penalties in the entire game, all four against Frontier, three 15-yarders th three and a five-yarder. Yeah. Mohawk has not been penalized in this game. So that was the one downside so far for Frontier. They, uh, they have not locked up a lot of this stuff here. First down and 10, First the ball at the 48-yard line, 49-yard line actually we'll call it. Trips to the near side left, shotgun formation. Davenport takes the snap, steps up, flushed out of the pocket, heavy rush, he's gone down. Who got the sack again? No, that's Blight. That's Corbin Blight on the sack. Tackled by number six, Corbin Blight. All the way back inside of Mohawk territory, back to the 41 yard line. Yeah, he was sacked a bunch there in the first half. He's had a little bit more luck here in the second half, but this time Blight tracks him down, grabs him by the ankles and the reason I said who got him, because I was waiting for uh, Bryant, Jacob Bryant, to get him. He had, I think, three sacks in the oh, first yeah, half. Oh, yeah, he just wreaked havoc back there yeah, in the and first he, half. And he is still out there right now. Yeah, they, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the guys out there. As I mentioned, Bryant's out there, Blight. Hildreth's out there. Freeman. And, yeah, th this is their, pretty much their starting D out there right now. Yeah, again, four minutes, 40 seconds to go. We probably won't see these guys back on offense. Second down and a 20. Out of the gun with receivers on either side. Woolridge coming in motion. And a pass in and out of the hands. Ooh, I tell you what, that tight end there, Matthew yeah, Pollan would want that back. He was wide open and a good job of delivering it once again by the quarterback Davenport. Yeah, Davenport's five of 14 passing, but. That yeah, comes with an asterisk. Th yeah, there have been a few drops. I know that two point conversion, that was a, a drop right there as well. So. Yeah, it could have been a lot more production in these numbers here for Davenport. 4.29 to play. Again, our score 53 to 12 here. As uh, Frontier's offense, they definitely showed up. After, again, they came in having lost four of their last five games after being right in the thick of the battle for the Intercounty League. But starting with that overtime loss to Turner's, they went the wrong way yep. until tonight. That's where their slide started for sure. Back to pass, again a heavy rush. Davenport dumps it off late, incomplete. Shippy was in the general vicinities. Nice. And now we're looking at fourth down. Nice job by Davenport, kind of a stiff arm there. He bought himself an extra second so he could unload that football instead of taking a big sack. Yeah, he has not been afforded comfort in the pocket uh, vir on virtually any snap here. No, and he's made good plays again, just a sophomore. and. Um, yeah, he's been chased around back there an awful lot, but he's not made many mistakes. Uh, you know, again, taking those sacks, sometimes those just weren't his fault. Forty-three yard line, third and twenty. Uh, yeah, it should be fourth and twenty actually. And a timeout called on the field. We'll step aside for the break. 4.20 to play in this one. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, it is Frontier 53 and Mohawk 12. So fourth down and 20 for the Mohawk Warriors from their own 42-yard line as they would like to get into the end zone at least one more time here. But let's see what kind of play they're going to run here. I think we're going to see some trickery here. See if they can pull it off on fourth down. They have Davenport under center. And he'll float one out to the right side a little bit high. Paulin also didn't quite time the jump. It goes off his hands incomplete. Would have been well shy of a first down anyway. So the Red Hawks now will take over at the 42-yard line, first down and 10. 
And yeah, it looks like we were not going to see the starters come back out on offense as we. Oh, I see the forces out there. Well, actually, I, I see Kirk Kendall's coming out too. Let's see. Blight is out yeah. there. He's no. The, well, these are their yeah. these are their main guys. These are the starters. Yeah. These are, the starters are going to stay out here. Interesting. Usually, the seniors and the starters that aren't seniors, they can enjoy the fruits of their labor at this point, 53-12 game, late fourth quarter. But they are out there right now. Hmm. Not what I would have expected. Coming in motion is DeForest. And they go up the middle. And it's going to be Hildreth will take it himself. And he's down near the 30-yard line. Yeah, I have to say I'm surprised. This is, I mean, you talk about a chance to have, whoops, sorry, Sean. He nah, you're good. Elbowed you in the head. Yeah, you're good. Offensive foul on me as I jump yeah, ahead of the basketball five, season. Five yarder there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that'll be a first down, by the way, for Hildreth. So a gain of about 10. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if, there, if you're going to have a chance to play a, a Turkey Day game against your rival and get some of the younger kids out there, this would be the one. Well, and here again, I, I see where, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll pull guys late in the game to avoid injuries for the, the, the coming weeks. And, well, we just don't have any coming weeks anymore. So and Inside give, Kirkendall, breaking tackle, still going, and they're down close to the red zone again, Sean. Yeah, I think I think they want to get in one more time here. Yeah, it sure looks that way. I'll go, you know, that, they're not throwing the ball, but they've only thrown it once tonight anyway. Hildreth, one like pass Kirkendall. attempt. That was incomplete. It's not too often that you see a score of 60 or better in uh, in high school football. You see a lot. Well, you see it a lot when whoever UMass plays. They yeah. <laughs> they score 50, 60. Yeah, I I don't want to get started on that. Whipple's gone. Looks like yeah, they're gonna have a new coach, and really I, I think they have to really think about what they're doing with that program yep. because it's not working. Four and eight this year and one of the worst defenses in the nation. They run up the middle on second and short. Four momentum probably got them the first. We're down to 250 to play. Yeah, it looks like, Sean, they want to get in one more time and maybe kick the, pick the point, get it up to 60. Yeah, we'll see who the new man in Amherst will be. They don't have a conference, Sean. They split their home games between the yeah. campus. and I don't know. It was kind of cool when we played Rhode Island and New Hampshire and Maine and UConn every year. BU back when they had a program. Just I'm not sure it's ever going to work, but we'll see. They're going to go to Samaski, who has scored earlier. And he keeps the legs going. He's down right near the 15-yard line or so. Clock continues to go, 2.07. Ball carried by well, I think they can run a couple more regular plays and then they can start taking a knee. Yeah, that was actually could. good for a first down. They could start taking a knee now and it would be awfully close, but. Uh, yeah, you could. Because uh, the, 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 the play clock. 49, yeah. yeah, they could actually take, uh, they could take three knees. And yeah, so let's see if that's what they do here. Ball at the 15 yard line. I was actually waiting for Hildreth to potentially break it. Yeah, not this is not exactly victory formation. They're going to run a play here. Hildreth will take the snap. Uh, and it looks offside. like Mohawk jumped offside. That'll stop the clock. It'll march. No, illegal oh. procedure call against, illegal motion call against the uh, Red Hawks. So mark them back five. 55 yards in penalties now against the Red Hawks. That was the one black mark against their performance. Other than that, they get an A. Yeah, they had that problem against South Hadley. They, they committed some bad penalties in that one, and that certainly didn't help their cause there. All right, now we're coming down to the one-minute mark. Now you could go to victory formation. You could. And that's what they're going to do. Hildreth takes a snap, takes a knee, and they will have to do that yeah, one, more time. one more time. And then we will be done here. Nice performance. We knew Frontier was a heavy favorite coming in. They did well. Definitely some bright moments, though, for Mohawk. We'll talk about that on the postgame show. And definitely hope for the future. They're going to finish this year 1-9, and nine, but the fact that they finished the year right. and played all the games on their schedule, I mean, if you had told us that back in September, we would have really questioned that. Yeah, that was a tough start for them. And, and they have something to build on for next year. Hildreth now will take one more knee. And he does so. 20 seconds left, and they don't have to take another snap. So that'll be the final score. We'll take a quick timeout here. We'll have the post-game 
show coming up. They're going to hand out the trophy and the MVP awards for both teams. Frontier wins at 53 to 12 on the conquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Children Falls scoreboard. All right, we are back here in Buckland, and let's pick up the PA announcer here for the post-game awarding. Yeah, the players now have are completing going through the handshake line, and now we will have the post-game festivities here from Pollard Field in Buckland. We will do the awarding of the MVP awards. And again, the Player of the Game Awards, the MVP Awards, Portable one for each school. The Mike Gaffigan Memorial Next. Award will never go to number eight, Sean Davenport. Yeah, that kid had a good game. Scored both of his school's touchdowns. For Frontier, the Tim Dash Memorial Award will go to Garrett DeForest. Four touchdowns over 200 yards. That's a pretty easy call, Hubie. Absolutely, yeah. Two for two on those. And the school trophy will remain in South Deerfield until next year. Yeah, until next year. And there it is. The players from Frontier, the captains grabbed it. The trophy was in the trophy case down there in South Deerfield, and it's going to go right back down there for one more year. And then they're going to bring it out on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving 2019. And the Warriors, they're going to have something to say about it, Sean. They're going to want to bring that back to Buckland. Uh, again, this series has been much more competitive over the last uh, 10 years, 15 years or so. And uh, Last two years, been a little yeah, tough. Yeah, a little tough to the last couple. But again, that, that thing sat down there in Frontier for about a decade and a half, I think. They had to... They had to find something to put in its place after they finally lost it here a few years back. And Mohawks had it a couple of times, but yeah, last couple of seasons have been tough. Uh, Frontier's been pretty good. Mohawk looking to bounce back next year for sure. 53-12, Frontier is the final. Again, the Tim Dash Memorial MVP Award for Frontier, Garrett DeForest. And the Mike Gaffigan MVP Award for the Mohawk Warriors, sophomore quarterback, Sean Davenport. We'll take a timeout here and wrap things up in Buckland. High School Football here on Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney in Greenfield. Call his office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ Service. Voted best mobile disc jockey in the Valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webbs, America's yarn store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market, great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in South Deerfield. 53-12 the final here, and another victory, fourth straight victory for the Frontier Red Hawks, and uh, it was the Garrett DeForest Show here tonight, and uh, fortunately for high school football fans in Bear Country, the Garrett DeForest Show is far from over one more year of that guy. Yep, going to be fun to watch. He was over 1,000 yards on the season coming in, had about 1,100 and some change, and Piled on another couple hundred yards tonight here. Four touchdowns for him. And I'll tell you, Matt Hildreth ran the ball extremely well. Also seven carries, about 170 yards. Pair of touchdown scores for him. He only threw the ball once in the entire game, and uh, that was an incomplete pass. But Frontier did not need to throw the ball much at all. Uh, the Mohawk Warriors look at their side of the ledger. And yeah, they never did get the running game going get, at all. You could see exactly what the problem there was. Grenier ended up with, uh, excuse me, Ryan Walker ended up with 12 yards. And, Five carries for him. Evan Shippy for uh, three carries for ten yards, and you know Harrison had a carry for six. Coco had three carries for five. Other than that, uh, it was all Sean Davenport. And if it wasn't for all the, the yards he lost on the sacks, he'd have had a pretty good running uh, day himself. But throwing the ball pretty good, close to 100 yards, uh, five of 16 passing, and then we did see a few drops in there as well as we mentioned. So, uh, but I'll tell you what, as a sophomore, that kid looks poised. Uh, he didn't make a lot of mistakes. Flushed out of the pocket quite a bit, able to throw the ball. 
uh, out of out of the, you know from running it and and just uh, again an option quarterback in the, of the future, tall kid. He throws the ball well, and yeah, going to be a lot of fun to watch him develop over the next couple of years. Him and, and Grenier get that kid back healthy, and uh, they got a good nucleus to start uh, a season next year. With the win, Frontier finishes the 2018 season at six and five. Mohawk falls to one and nine. We are done here in Buckland. We get ready for Greenfield hosting Turner's Falls tomorrow, 93rd meeting between those rivals. 10-15 pregame show, 10-30 kickoff live from Vets Field in Greenfield. Final score for the final time here, Pollard Field in Buckland on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. The Frontier Red Hawks 53, the Mohawk Warriors 12. For Sean Hubert and for Dave Reno in our studio, I'm Jeff Terrell. Thanks for joining us tonight and have a happy Thanksgiving in Bear Country, everyone.